Due to the fact that Daniel didn't show who you are, I think we just start with a little bit of our background. So I think I'm going to introduce you to this nice guy. This is Nicholas Stoffel. And he's originally a biologist and doing then kind of dive into this part of psychology, quantum theory, how can we find crazy things stuff and trying to see how that theory starts fitting into our normal daily life. And I can introduce this nice guy Felix. Um, he's a great community researcher and was clever enough to organize it so that he got funding to travel all around the world and visit lots of different communities to write his PhD about what can be done uh, in order to achieve a culture of sustainability and what are all the factors involved in that. So now I can ask how can those two guys come together? So I'm a biologist and me I studied psychology. And so that's what I want to show you. So where can we meet? What are we looking for? And so the dialogue of the study we are doing is uh, yeah, it's the question how spirituality can be implemented in this pathway to sustainability. Because in a lot of the discussions about sustainability, there's the economic, the ecology, and the social part. But in the normal discussion, there's nothing about spirituality. And so we thought, okay, what about that? Isn't there anything that could be useful for uh, the sustainable development? Yeah, and there are even um, that I bring sort of my background in the parapsychological research. There are a lot of um, studies uh, done on the prevalence of it, the frequency of people experiencing things that don't really fit into. Um, the established scientific world view uh, of uh, basically um, purely uh, materialistic or physicalist understanding. Um, and so in the, in the group of inexplicable phenomena, for example, there would be things such as telepathy, extrasensory perception, precognition, psychokinesis and so on. And depending on what phenomena you're asking uh, for, up to 50% of the population say that they have actually experienced uh, something like this in their lives. Um, and if you ask uh, how many believe that it's true that other people experience it, then this number uh, even goes up. Um, and at, such as Fintborn and other sustainability projects actually explicitly refer to these subtle realms and phenomena like this and experiences like that and say they use them um, uh, in their daily lives. Um, expect a miracle is even in the slogan of it. And so really that was our question. Is there something missing from the mainstream sustainability discourse in science and politics? So, and now, it's, we use fishing as a metaphor for science, because you have like an ocean, there's things swimming inside, you don't know what's happening there, and you're trying to catch things. And normally you only can catch things uh, which you have a net where, which is catching those fishes. And so that's a kind of a problem here, because that's, we can keep on talking about that for hours and days. Like, why can't we with scientific methods kind of making experiments and coming to evidence about giant cabbage or messages from God or attunement or things like that. And so we had a kind of a problem, okay, how, how can we deal with that in a scientific way? And um, so we, we started, and so uh, this is only the first step of our study. So we started making a pilot study here in Finton and stayed here last year for 10 days and we're interviewing people and taking part in all the things that are happening in the community.
unity, and also by trying something we call immersive observation. So a kind of, we have started being kind of fishes uh, by ourselves, and just swimming in the ocean here and trying, isn't it possible that we get a, or maybe experiencing a miracle? So, and that, um, comes to that point where I said we may have triangulation out from first person approach, like what are we experiencing? Where second person, we are asking people from the Fintown community, how is that function? Have you had any experiences? How do you use that? And third person data, so we are also triangulated with uh, scientific theories and evidence which is already somewhere out there in the world. And so I want to show you, we created this net. With that map, we tried to catch all the fishes to kind of get a hold of this miracle and suffer around thing. And so that's what we've done. So on the left side, we get all the data I was uh, talking about just. And then we are kind of making this map with all the questions. We put on the data and out from the data. And so we were interested in what types of experiences and phenomena <coughs> A kind of our experience of happening here in Finkhorn. And so, what do the people um, attribute, which kind of effects people attribute to them? So, saying, what's the benefit coming out from that? Then, which narratives are giving for the experience? So, how do people fit those experiences in their worldview? Or how do they explain it? And then we're looking for what are typical characteristics. So, what's happening actually there? Is it how can we describe that? What's happening? And then the fifth question is, um, how do people judge if those experience, uh, experiences are significant for them, or if it's just something happening in daily life and all the time? And then the sixth question, which is a kind of where we want to end up, is how can we a kind of create yeah, let's say how Gilman was saying, Robert Gilman saying it, um, how can we create a domain which is somehow is making it easier to experience miracles, to have contact with subtle realms, and being in some way in a spiritual way of living. So that was the kind of a map we constructed. And let's and see. Of course, it will be impossible in this short amount of time to give you all the data that we collected and we are also still in the middle of uh, analyzing it ourselves. So we just really want to give you a, a few impressions of what that looks like. So we did interviews and what, what does it look like when you do qualitative um, research and you analyze this kind of data. So we'll go question by question and we'll start with the types of phenomena that were reported is that we will come into this category of spirituality in several realms. So first of all, um, there's contact with subtle fields and contact with subtle beings. We made a differentiation there that in that the contact with subtle beings, um, the contact is with something that um, has more of a personality, a more of a kind of identity, and whereas in the subtle fields, we're really thinking more about um, something like um, levels of reality or um, principles of the universe that, that, that don't have such a personal connect, uh, character, but you can nevertheless sort of sense them that they're there. Um, and then there are um, phenomena or experiences. Oops, sorry. Working with my ego in order to become 
a more loving person and so on, that we, many people would call that spiritual and also I myself would use the word sometimes in this way, but in this context um, we only want to look at those phenomena which somehow imply that there is something beyond the world of appearances. So if I say I work with my ego in order to become a more loving person and I connect with God or a higher level of reality or it's because of karma, something that's sort of beyond, then we would also begin here. Um, and just to give you a few examples, something that is very um, present here in Finland is this uh, method of attunement. There's attunement before work, um, where the, the purpose is to uh, connect to spirit and to the sense of how it comes together. Or we, we tune in, we connect to the earth and to spirit, and to the subtle realms really, and ask for guidance really. And you know, it's, it's like through setting that intention how we work is I think different, and that the intention behind it is different. The intention is to be open and to be guided bring our heart to the work. Um, then there's also attunement for decisions, where if a decision has to be taken, people try to connect to this intuitive level beyond, um, and uh, receive guidance that's already mentioned here. Unfortunately, we won't be able to show you all the reports, so guidance um, <coughs> somehow in the meditation or otherwise getting an impulse or a direction or a message of what to do, which is often um, not what people plan, but it's something that uh, also often comes as a surprise, but it feels very um, authoritative. Okay. Then there is this big connection with uh, subtle beings. Unfortunately, there's, we won't be able to, to show you all of this in 20 minutes, but um, we can come back to it in the question angels, the landscape and angels. And then we asked about the effects of being in, in touch with these subtle realms. Actually, I don't know if you can really ask that to people, but just from the stories and from the interviews, we are kind of filtrated what people think and attribute what the effects are true. So, and yeah, probably you can divide it into levels, and the ones on the community level, so you're saying um, this kind of, that we are trying to be in contact with subtle realms or to a specific way of being spiritual is uh, very good for the community. And first of all, most just it's uh, attractive, it's, yeah, there's an attraction for other people to come in there, and, and the next one is that it's good for the functioning of the community. So you have a kind of a core where you're all focused on, and um, so that's one benefit. Another one is for decision making, but here, yeah, a kind of the answers varies. So some people saying, yeah, this is working totally perfect, and if we attune and see, for example, uh, in the decision who's gonna move into this house, um, and they're making an attunement looking for, okay, who's going to be the right person going there, and there are lots of people saying like, wow, this is working perfect, and like magical, and it always has been like a good decision, but there are also other people saying like, oh, it's more kind of an achievement instead of achievement. So, another one is the, what we call outcome of work, so I think that we have a little, uh, wrong direction, um, a little quote from a person who is kind of working in the garden and saying, uh, and then when it comes to actually digging out something like that has got a deep, deep root, and I just put in the fork and kind of loosen things and then like to help the plant and communicate with the plant and asking the plant to let go. And the result of that is that the plant is, you get way more out of the root instead of just, if it's just pulling. So that's just one little example for how people are saying, oh, this is, working pretty good and it's helping us in our daily life. 
And then there's the level of the individual. A lot of people say, it's, I'm just feeling better by doing this. I'm feeling more confident. I feel like I'm on a way of personal development because I'm more open up to experiences, more open up to other people and things like that. There's a sense of connection to other people and also a sense of connection to yourself. So because out of this attunement, and another thing that is um, very often played here is the game of transformation. And so people are saying like, out of this coming insights for myself, so I'm understanding more who I am and what is my place in the world. And let's also connect to that sense of sense. So you feel like how things are happening, that's making sense for you. So if it's like one step coming after the next, and you feel like, wow, oh, this is kind of a miracle how that's happened, how I'm in the flow of things happening. So there are a lot of effects people were telling about and saying, like, yeah, this is very helpful for us uh, trying to have this communication with subtle realms and uh, having some sort of spirituality. regarding the characteristics of these experiences and phenomena. Of course, we found a lot in all the stories and um, opinions that people told us. Um, again, we won't be able to get into everything. I think one of the mm, most impressive um, characteristics is that um, very often there is um, it, there is something that gives the impression that these things have a life of their own. They they they're not really controllable. It, they're, often it, it's said that it's important that there is no conscious wanting in, involved, um, but that you rather need a sort of openness of mind. At the same time. Um, a strong focus or an inner orientation um, is very important. For example, um, wanting to live in a way that is beneficial to all beings, but being open to how exactly that manifests in each different situation would be a good example for this. Uh, would be sort of a, seemingly a mix where then synchronicities uh, occur more often. Um, often there's a very strong felt sense, like almost bodily for many people, to know somehow in the moment they know this is true or this is what I should do. Even though, sort of for an outsider, very often it may be indistinguishable from coincidence. So um, we'll tell a story later where, where that becomes clear. Um, you won't go very much into this. It, uh, basically, we also found that there is a number of criteria that people use in order to make this determination whether something is really um, significant and trustworthy or not. One has to do with the felt sense, um, but then also there is, can be a rational contemplation to see does it really make sense, and we find out yes, it does. And, and, more trustworthy, or also if other people are also experiencing uh, similar things or come to set similar conclusions, like for example in the attunement for decisions, if everybody comes to the same conclusion. Of course, that's um, also a sign for um, it, it being more reliable. And out of out of all of these questions, basically the, the main question that we're sort of heading towards and trying to find answers for ourselves is what can we do or what, what is helpful in a culture? What, what should be implemented so that as many miracles as possible can happen individually and collectively? Yeah, you already said it, so you can work, or people were telling you that what's happening is there's something that could be done on the individual or the collective and level and also in the environment. And one example is 
Robin Hall already mentioned this, this morning, was saying that we have 47 different spiritual practices here. So there's a lot of things reported that's happening here, like a tumor, like a game of transformation, like, 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 a lot of things. It has a lot to do kind of with the attitudes. So one person was saying, like, just expecting a miracle is opening up another dimension. So it's a kind of being open for that and looking for that and a kind of having the belief that things like this could happen. You can have principles, guidelines in education. But I'm going to jump a little bit because I was saying, seeing this guy telling us it's not so much time left. And you want to, one thing I want to show you is one of, a kind of like an evaluation of this place was many times to the same because we were interested in, okay, we have Fintorn here, we have people who have a lot of people having this belief a lot of practices are in the, on the place and so does that make a difference? It's like if somebody's coming here, is it more likely to experience a miracle or some kind of enlightenment in a place like this? And one person she was saying, also I want to say that Fintron isn't a special place because everything like a normal day life is happening here too. It is at the same time. And so that's a kind of a summarize of uh, where we are in analyzing the data and saying, yeah, there is something special and at the same time it could happen in any other place from this world too. And so the question is, how do we go on? We have a lot of further steps, so, and one of them is we are saying like this first person approach, we are saying that, hey, if that's the case that Fintron is a special place, so it, somehow we should experience that by going there and we have a couple of uh, stories or experience where we're saying that oh this is a kind of those things we're looking for and one of those was that um, because Graham is not only a master of organization he's also one of the loveliest hosts you can imagine and he put us somewhere uh, here in the bank house, it's a kind of a guest house, and say so here you can stay. And there, we've been in there, it was perfect for us because we could go out, interview people, and have a nice place. And then we were told, oh, it's necessary that you leave out there the next day. And, and, were, and move to the campsite. And we were thinking, well, this is going to make things much more tricky with the computers and the recording apparatus and so on, and then to be on the campsite and so on. So, so we said, um, we had the feeling that somehow it might still be possible that we stay there, even though everybody said, no, we need the house for other people then. And so we, we put out the intention or the wish to the devas of Fintan and we said, if possible, we'd like to stay here or at least, you know, have good conditions for continuing this, this scientific work. And Graham was still saying, no, it's not possible, you have to leave out tomorrow. <laughs> and then we were doing an interview in, in, uh, on our veranda, and the woman we were talking was saying, like, ah, look, here's somebody was passing, like, ah, you have to talk to that woman too, she's very interesting. And so she just stopped, and we had a little chance, he was asking, like, oh, okay, perfect, we can do that, what I'm going to meet you. Here at that place, we were like, oh, we are now, it looks like we have to leave here tomorrow. And she was like, ah, that, that's the two of you. And okay, uh, let me think. Yeah, it could be possible because we can arrange something else and uh, so we can stay that, here. Turned out that she was the person in charge of this <laughs> place of accommodation and that actually the bookings had changed, so the group of people who was supposed to come in didn't anymore. And But only because of this meeting did she make the connection. And so eventually? Eventually, yeah, but we could only stay one more day and then move somewhere else. And so that, that's a kind of part of our miracle uh, theory is that something is happening to you that's a response to your wish, but not exactly in the way you thought it would be. And so we were moved to somewhere else, which was in fact even a better place for us. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's, that's even another story inside that, but yeah. I think we have no time to tell that. <laughs> so, you know, and now the question is what to do with that. So we are going to put in our own stories, a kind of triangulated with uh, scientific theories. And if you're all done with that, we start on, maybe going coming back to Fintol, maybe going to another community, Stavano would be one, which is for sure interesting. And then 
Oh, oh, you're not allowed to see that because of uh, copyright reasons. So <laughs> we skip it and go here. <laughs> yeah, so what are we going to do in the ultimate stuff? So basically, we also want to leave you with this question. But um, what does so what's, what does the miracle kitchen look like? <laughs> Thank you.